So maybe bridging your talk and, and your talk, because I didn't, never got to follow up with you. But so you're talking about, I mean, and it makes sense. You and I touched base in a break a while ago. So this makes sense in terms of uh, creating product, chemical product uh, from this path. But what about other pathways? Because sequestering, you know, piping, storing CO2 is also not without energy. I mean, you mentioned that why would I spend all that energy? But, but if you were going the path of a mineralization, um, products that go into cement, you, you know, the comparison, it's, it's not a zero energy input comparison. Uh, I've just done a lot of work on the, on the sequestration piping storage coming out of the pipeline game. And that is an expensive proposition as well, right? So uh, the, ten, the 10X makes it pretty obvious, <laughs> but I, I've not really seen numbers on, you know, that the other product pathways like mineralization. And, and, and I certainly have no expertise in that area. I mean, I, all, all that I could say is, this is perhaps, I mean, Oops, sorry. Um, carbon utilization is perhaps the most expensive of all. And, uh, and there's another thing that I wanted to highlight. It isn't so much carbon dioxide. If you look at the table, you'll see that carbon dioxide is at the very bottom. So you say that's bottom of the thermodynamic scale. That's why it's so expensive. But if you were to do the numbers, here's a simple exercise. Imagine that you're going to use electrolysis to generate hydrogen from water enough hydrogen to produce one ton of ethylene, right? And also you're going to use electrolysis to generate carbon monoxide from carbon dioxide, enough carbon monoxide to produce ethylene, right? To put the carbon in ethylene. It's surprising that two thirds of that energy is going into hydrogen and only one third of that energy is going into carbon dioxide. So really the most expensive piece there is not the carbon dioxide is the hydrogen, is the fact that you have to bring in hydrogen from water. As you kind of directed it both directions, I mean, Carlos is absolutely right. I think it's a great, a great paper to present what, you know, again, when I see, just to be clear, when I see carbon utilization for chemical production, I wish we would stop talking that way uh, for this reason. Uh, there'll be a day when we're, when we're without a carbon source for products, but the more that people start proposing those pathways, the more we have to fight regulatory pressure against those pathways and, and we fight barriers that are being created on things that will, that will make no sense. So, I mean, I'm, first off, I just commend you for putting the paper out and making it very clear. Um, yeah, and this, this also, to your point, is the green hydrogen issue, right? It, you know, it's one thing to use hydrogen for its chemical value, but if I'm going to use it as fuel, you know, the splitting of the water to generate the hydrogen from an energetics perspective makes no sense to then use that hydrogen as a, as a fuel source in my furnaces. So that's why it's, it's just important that people start to look at the founding principles behind these numbers. And I think as Carlos said, it doesn't matter whether I use electrolysis or anything else, I can't take CO2 and water and get to these products in a way that make that without without using massive amounts of greater energy. I think your, your point, just to finish, is on so it doesn't mean that they're not utilization pathways that are less penalty and I think like the cement application or others but at the end I think what we have to start doing is start looking at how we allocate our resources energetics investments towards the ones that provide the best returns and they're the most efficient use of electrons and that's how I think about it is if we're going to go through a transition over the next three four decades the most efficient use of electrons is we should get the capital first not the least efficient and at the end you know, maybe power does become low cost at some point, but it's certainly not over the next several decades going to be the case. And so, uh, you know, just keep that in mind as we look at these options. Right? And, and I want to add that it's not that I'm necessarily in agreement with Bob. It's just that I want to show the numbers and then you make up your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever product you want to make, do the calculations. They're very simple. They're very easy to do and then decide whether or not you can afford it. And that's what I've told um, our, our DAO's leadership. Uh, we may be headed in this direction, but at least I want you to be aware of the cost right. of the transformation. Then you decide what you want to do. I, I would agree with you on that, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs>
Carlos, uh, yeah, they are easy to do, but a consulting firm can always help.